Hello everyone, welcome back to another FMF podcast for today, just with me, Chris Hottam. This will be a quick one, I wanted to talk about the concept of monopolies and competition, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I hope you all had a good weekend, I'm sure you all were busy with all sorts of things. For those of you who stayed in, perhaps you watched some, uh, some movies or some series, and you probably used a streaming service such as Netflix or maybe Apple TV. I know I watched a few things on Apple TV. There's some uh, good series on there nowadays, some new series as well. So it's quite exciting to have these different options. Now, to give you the pertinent example for today, uh, multi-choice is often accused of enjoying a monopoly in South Africa, that uh, they're the only ones who are capable of streaming things, providing content, both entertainment, sports, take your pick. But that is quite simply not the case. Those services I just mentioned, uh, we can watch those the services we can also watch other channels such as uh, ETV on TV for example so the charge that multi-choice enjoys a monopoly is simply false there is competition um, ICASA last year for those of you who remember and just to refresh your mind ICASA came out with proposed um, legislation it was still in the discussion stage still in the drafting stage but there was leveled at sort of bringing down multi-choice at ensuring that multi-choice doesn't enjoy what ICASA believes is a monopoly uh, and as I've mentioned, that is quite simply false. A monopoly can only exist when there are barriers to competition. Now, just because there might not be one other big competitor to multi-choice does not mean that there isn't competition or that a monopoly exists. As I mentioned, those streaming services, specifically Netflix and Apple TV and indeed Amazon Prime. There are those are three ones uh, off the top of my head. Unfortunately, we don't have Disney+. Plus yet in South Africa, hopefully soon, so that we can all watch The Mandalorian. I'm quite keen to watch that one myself. Um, but yeah, just to go back to the the main point, we have other options that we can watch. It's not just a multi-choice. Of course, it's sports. Um, multi-choice manages to win the rights to broadcast sports events, and luckily they can do that because they can use that money for development and transformation in grassroots sports. That's a good thing. Uh, if it was simply free to air, if it was, um, if companies couldn't bid for those sports rights, they wouldn't be able to invest that money in any sorts of grassroots development, and we wouldn't see the transformation in South African sport, which the government purports to want. That simply wouldn't come about. Just on the concept of monopolies, uh, philosophically, I wanted to quote Ayn Rand here. Uh, she was talking about antitrust laws in the U.S., but I think it applies here as well, at least conceptually. And philosophically, uh, writing in the Objectivist Newsletter in February 1952 on antitrust, the rule of unreason, Rand said, But in fact, no coercive monopoly has ever been or ever can be established by means of free trade on a free market. Every coercive monopoly was created by government intervention into the economy, by special privileges such as franchises or subsidies, which closed the entry of competitors into a given field by legislative action. So these proposed legislation, uh, this proposed legislation by ICASA, for example, would erect more barriers to competition. It would indeed make it easier for multi-choice to continue its strong position in the market. When there's government uh, barriers enforced, it makes it much more difficult for small players to enter the market because bigger companies have the capacity to counter, not to counter, but to, um, to deal with and to accommodate for uh, more legislation. They simply have more resources to handle these sorts of things. Uh, they can make sure that they comply with everything, whereas small competitors simply don't have that sort of a cap capacity, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind when you hear the, the smear of monopoly thrown around. Um, just because, as I said, competitors don't exist doesn't mean that there's a monopoly or that those competitors couldn't exist in the future. The market will simply um, adjust accordingly. Maybe multi-choice will um, need to adapt their prices at some point because there will be new competitors and then we'll see what happens. At the end of the day, they have to cater for their consumers' needs. I think they're trying to do that in some ways with new packages and that sort of thing. Um, but we'll have to see what happens in the future. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's sort of a lazy thing to throw around the concept of monopolies all the time when uh, when government wants to bring down businesses that it deems too big. It is, it's never it should never be up to government to decide when companies are too big. It's simply the, that simply indicates that that company has catered very well to its consumers' needs, that they've risen to those needs and wants, and that they've catered for them. And if that company then rises up to a big position and enjoys that. We should praise them for that. That's good. They've provided a service. Uh, in a way, going to one company over another is like voting. If I choose to subscribe to DSTV over something else or to use that money for Netflix, for example, I'm voting with my money. So that's it for today. Just a quick one again on the concept of monopolies um, and uh, the sort of 
issue of regulation. I hope you all found it interesting. Please leave a comment below. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you again for all your continued support. We really appreciate it. I hope you all have a, all have a good week. Try to stay cool. I know it's very hot. So good luck with the load shedding. And we'll talk to you guys all again soon. Thanks and see you, see you very soon. Bye.